Hey everyone. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some simple yet really effective tips on drawing fur with pen and ink. Now, uh, this has been a frequent request from many subscribers for a while. So I thought it's time that I create a tutorial just for that. All right. And you'll find that these tips can be applied to drawing uh, fur and uh, hair for many different types of subjects. So it's really a matter of just how you choose to apply it. All right. So let's get started. And of course, thanks again to everyone who has played a part in supporting my books, Pen and Ink Drawing a Simple Guide and Pen and Ink Drawing the Workbook. Uh, just know that it means a lot to keep this channel going. And for those who have gone out of their way to leave a review on Amazon or uh, anywhere else for that matter, a big thanks. Now, I can't count the times I've been asked about how to draw fur and the types of issues uh, some of you run into when trying to do it. Now, I've already addressed the key aspects of drawing texture in general in my book and also in several of the tutorials that I have on my channel. So with these tips, um, I will be addressing other aspects that we sometimes don't really think about as much or are not really aware of in the way that we should. Now, one of the first things that's really important to pay attention to is the overall growth pattern or flow of the fur. Now, uh, this can appear in a variety of ways and can be affected or determined by uh, the type of subject, like it, the type of animal, uh, where on the animal, like is it by the, uh, the muzzle, the ear, the chest, the tail, the limbs, the body, you know, and so on. But the idea is you want to get a sense of the general orientation or direction of the fur or the, the growth pattern, where it seems to lead or lean to or point to. And don't be surprised either if there isn't one dominant pattern or direction. There may even seem to be uh, uh, in, going in opposite directions, but the point is there will be a pattern and that's the thing you want to identify. Now, this is really important because it enables you to step back and see the texture as a whole. You know, you see the relationship between the different parts and appreciate that there's an intrinsic uh, a sense of harmony and rhythm that flows throughout the entire form and sort of, uh, you know, like unifies all the different areas. And this then enables you to place your strokes with confidence because you know they are guided by that innate pattern. Next, we look at clusters. Now, usually when you look at animal fur and hair in general, you'll see that the overall shape can be broken up into smaller clusters of fur. Now, this is important because it enables you to uh, break up larger shapes and see the smaller building block shapes that make it up. And these shapes help to simplify the process and makes approaching your drawing a lot less intimidating. Because one of the most intimidating aspects of drawing, uh, drawing fur and hair in general is getting lost in all the details. You know, just seeing one big mass of millions of strands of hair. And the key is not to get sucked into this, you know, but to step back and start to identify the clusters, you know, one group at a time. Now, as you start identifying the clusters, you will begin to see their shapes and their sizes. You will appreciate the significant role they play in capturing the texture that you want. You know, and also important here is that you see how they relate to each other and uh, the overall pattern that you identified in the first tip. You see, so now you, you'll try to answer additional question. You go further with it. Now you say, okay, do they flow into each other? Do they overlap? Do they spiral? Do they stagger? Think of uh, how they relate to each other and how they relate to the overall growth pattern. And lastly, we consider light and shadow. This is the last element that will give life to our fur. Without light and shadow, there isn't much uh, depth or volume or mass conveyed. And essentially the fur will just uh, remain like a bunch of strokes bundled together and you don't want that, all right? Now, the key is to see the mass of fur as a three-dimensional form. So when light shines on it, you know, there will be a separation of light and shadow. So this will create a value pattern. You know, this will create a gradation. So once you think of it in this way and try to identify these elements, you know, the light source, the shadow areas, the light areas, then see how this uh, is played out in the small clusters as well, then the shading process becomes drastically simpler. You know, you have to remember that, um, you know, smaller superficial forms almost 
always follow the value pattern of the larger dominant underlying mass. And then from here, it's just a matter of thinking of how we will vary our strokes to create or convey the value pattern of the fur. So we'll think about variations like um, uh, where our strokes will be more densely packed or layered or shorter or longer, uh, where they will be spaced out or more sparse. Those are the types of uh, decisions you'll be making about that. But you think about those prior concepts first. You know, you identify the overall uh, growth pattern. You look for the small groups and how they relate to each other. And once you can do that, then laying down your strokes will be so much easier. These are the things that I apply in my drawings over and over again. So let's do a quick demo uh, just to see how I incorporate all of them in a simple example. There you have it guys. Um, I hope you saw how these simple tips can be applied to make the process of drawing for uh, much simpler and a lot of fun. Um, so I hope you found something useful in this video. And if you did, please remember to give the video a thumbs up. Um, it really means a lot. And if you're new to my channel, remember to subscribe and to turn on your notifications so you won't miss any new uploads. And as usual, thanks for watching, keep practicing, and I'll see you next video.